Today is a special day because it is day one of my period. So what's so good about that? Well, I'll tell you, it's been a rough couple of weeks because I am one of the unlucky folks in the world afflicted by a condition called PMDD. Think of it as, as PMS or PMT times a thousand. So how has PMDD been for me? In this video, I'm going to give a bit of an overview of my experience with PMDD. So stick around. Hi, I'm Leslie, and I am a life coach based here in Brisbane, Australia. And the last two weeks have been very challenging in that I've had a lot of brain fog. I've been very short-tempered, um, just generally feeling quite overwhelmed. But that's PMDD. PMDD stands for Premenstrual Dysphoric Disorder. I described it in my intro as PMS times a thousand because it comes with the regular symptoms of PMS, things like bloating, irritability, fatigue, but there's the added <laughs> bonus of feeling those symptoms intensified and feeling them for a longer period of time than your standard episode of PMS. For me, I can almost calculate it down to the day. It's usually around day 14 of my cycle, so ovulation day. It's like when that egg drops, <laughs> everything else drops. And for that whole ovulation period, I'm, I'm taken over by this really powerful force. That means that I can only ever get, at best, a solid two weeks every month where I feel completely in control of my thoughts and everything else. It's almost like I'm, I'm two different people depending on my time of the month. When I'm really in the depths of my PMDD or what I call my sunken place, I don't have the option to just lie in bed for two weeks. I have a child, I have a partner, partners, <laughs> you know, my husband and household responsibilities. I have, I have life to live. So in order to be able to manage those things, especially the business building aspect, I've had to develop careful strategies for navigating this, this condition. I have a long history of depression and anxiety, and I remember when it started to really become an issue was when I was I was in junior high school. This was the first time I had to had to turn to get outside help for what was going on in my mind and in my behaviors. And knowing what I know now, this is when my depression and anxiety really became exacerbated by the cycle of my periods. For years and years and years, I had no idea what was going on inside me. Why I would be okay for two weeks, and then for the next two weeks, I became very angry, I became very confused, I struggled to communicate properly. In some situations, I would just have to retreat and not talk to any of my friends. Getting my homework done was a huge challenge. And I blamed myself. You know, I felt like maybe I was just lazy or there was, or guilty of some other behavior that was making me feel like I couldn't function as a regular human being. You know, I, I didn't know what to think. The worst part about it, I think, for me, was the confusion. It was just so confusing to me that I would be two different people. And when I was in my sunken place, I 
it's like I couldn't recognize or remember that person that I was when I was not in the darkness and vice versa. I would have times where I felt pretty happy-go-lucky. I was, I was a relatively jovial kid, even in my edgy teenage years, which I'm still going through for the record. I had a lot of things that I enjoyed. I had hobbies, I loved art, I loved music, I loved any kind of self-expression. Those things made me feel really happy. But then, in the middle of my cycle, it was like a pendulum. And when that pendulum swung, it got stuck. I would I would get into fights a lot more easily. I would I would fall asleep in class because the fatigue was so bad. I would clash with my teachers because of it. I would struggle, struggle, struggle to focus on anything for more than a couple of minutes. So my, my grades started to suffer. My study skills at that age weren't well developed enough for me to, to work around those mood shifts at the time. When I reached my late teenage years and my early 20s, I had a slightly better handle on things because I had more well-developed study skills, I was a bit more organized. I had more practice being alive and being a human. But I still didn't have a full grasp of what was happening in my body. I didn't know what I didn't know. My mood shifts became particularly problematic at that time because I wouldn't go from passive to being really aggressive or anything like that, it was more that I would be feel I would feel very confident at one minute and then sink into this deep vulnerability, this deep feeling of melancholy at, at the smallest trigger. I never became violent, I never became mean and nasty, but it was still a huge problem in my personal relationships because it was very often used against me in some way. And when you're experiencing something that you yourself don't understand, it's impossible to communicate that to a romantic partner or someone else you might be working closely with because you don't have the power of hindsight on your side at that stage. So I got into a relationship or two where I was almost berated for not being able to just be spontaneous and get up and go out and do things, or for getting upset when the guy I was with was behaving like a jerk, and because I was sometimes in that mode of completely lacking confidence, my ability to stand up for myself was threatened. So I became an easy target for emotional abuse. And that sucked. The next shift in my personality brought a different challenge in that I did start to feel a level of aggression after years of battling with this condition but not knowing what it was and struggling to communicate my needs and my expectations to people who I was close to, it started to make me really angry. This was most problematic in my late 20s. Like, my confidence level was pretty consistent. It was really high. So in my low state, it wasn't that I was lacking in confidence. I was a lot more protective of that confidence. So when people would get in my way, when people would wrong me in some way, my response was no longer to start seething and just getting really upset about it. It was, uh, no, 
blah 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 blah. Sometimes my responses, I'm sure, were completely justified, because I've always been a person who stands up for myself, no matter what mental state I am in. But there were times that I look back on or I think about a reaction that I might have had to a tense situation and I look at that, Leslie. You know how you sometimes have a friend who you feel like you are compelled to apologize after when they interact with other people in your life? That's how I started to feel about Sad Leslie. But the trouble with not really having that deep self-awareness of what was happening at that time is that I cannot have an accurate measurement of how justified my behaviors were in any given situation. Especially because I was still battling with with some pretty aggressive personalities in my life. So when I was sad, Leslie, I was like a snake backed into a corner, ready to unleash. Or it was also kind of like when someone apologizes for something they did when they were drunk. Not that that's a big part of my personal experience or anything, but it's a way to illustrate just how different OK Leslie and Sad Leslie were. It felt like a Jekyll and Hyde situation sometimes. It was like I was mentally split in two. But then I got into a relationship followed by another relationship that was very emotionally abusive and it caused me to start gaslighting myself. Because I was being gaslighted by my one partner and then my subsequent partner being told that whatever I was feeling was all in my head, which was kind of the point. <laughs> but the attitude was more like it's something that I should just be able to handle just by deciding that I wasn't going to have depression, that I wasn't going to be anxious, that I was going to just be happy. Because by then, I understood what PMS was, I understood that those few days before a period could be really challenging, but I was still unaware of the more profound impacts that that had been having on my life at that point. I wish that I could remember the exact moments or even the year that I learned about, that I first learned about PMDD as a condition, but, but I can't. I honestly cannot remember where and when I first heard about it. But it would have been sometime in my early to mid 30s, uh, probably my early 30s. And I kept encountering information about it that made me realize that this split that I had been experiencing could be explained by the hormonal changes that I was going through combined with how my body was communicating those changes to my brain and it it was like someone had switched on a light and things started to make a lot more sense. I used to write a lot of poetry and when I looked back at some of my writing that I did in my early to mid 20s. It was like I was. I had already been describing PMDD or my experience of PMDD in a poetic form. And I had that evidence to look back on to say, yes, <laughs> it all makes sense. I wrote a poem back in 2005 where I likened my confused thoughts to being conjoined triplets joined at the everything. It was like these little personalities constantly at war with each other, constantly perceiving each other in very 
strange and different ways. Some of my other writing was about this not being able to recognize my own reflection, and it didn't solve my problem, but it was very validating. This thing had been in me for so long, and I'd been fighting against it for so long, and that evidence showed me that my fighting spirit was strong, and that I could take the reins and ride that bull if I could just figure out some way to navigate around it. I actually had relief from PMDD for almost two years. That was when I was pregnant with my daughter, and for the period of time where I was breastfeeding her, and for the months that followed where I started taking antidepressants to deal with postpartum issues, to deal with residual anxiety from my previous miscarriages and everything that that was bringing into my early parenthood, I had almost forgotten about my PMDD until it came back. I went through a brief period where I said, I'm feeling really good. I've made great changes for my life. I had quit my job. I'd started my business. And I thought, with all these changes I've made, I'm sure now's a great time to start weaning myself off of my, off of my SSRIs. And it was fine for a bit. I, I, I did it with my doctor's supervision. I had like a whole plan and everything that I followed very carefully. But then because my depression and anxiety were so heavily triggered by hormonal shifts, and I had forgotten about that, I was physically defenseless. I got into such a dark place where I could not feel joy. I would see people around me hanging out with their friends, spending time with their families, having picnics, and, you know, just smiling. And I... I couldn't relate. I couldn't relate to smiling faces. Even when I was in physical settings where I could go through the motions of having a good time, where I was trying to remind my body and my mind what it felt like to just enjoy being at a concert or at the park or whatever it may be, it just was not providing me any relief. In that two week period after my ovulation, but then my period would come and I could take a break. I could take a break from it. But then, like clockwork, day 14 to 16, whoosh, back in the sunken place. I remember one time I was editing one of my YouTube videos and I was looking at this, this woman on the screen, this vibrant, happy, confident, you know, pretty kick-ass woman on the screen. And I thought, logically, I know that that is me. But I do not recognize that woman. How can we be the same person? I needed relief. I needed to get better. I tried a lot of things. Yoga, meditation, lots of exercise. I was still seeing my psychologist. I 
I was trying to do whatever I could do to avoid going back onto my SSRI. Because I had this idea in my head that, oh, I don't want to have to depend on pills for the rest of my life, or you know, I want to prove to myself I can do it. I was trying natural remedies. I was trying psilocybin, microdosing. And when I wasn't in the depths of PMDD, I was feeling pretty normal. But it was that, that two weeks of darkness that I just dreaded during the times when I felt okay. Someone I was, I was dating at the time encouraged me to get back on the meds until I could figure out some other things in my life because they really did help me. I didn't experience bad side effects when I got the dosage right. And he was very straight to the point about it. He was very logical about it. Which at first frustrated me, but then <laughs> I came to really appreciate it. I was like, you know what? What am I doing to myself? This, this is something that I need to do right now during a period of great transition in my life. It worked for me. It could work again. So I got back on my medication. And that really helped with the depression and anxiety aspect of the PMDD, but I still have the brain fog, the lack of concentration, and those aspects to to work around to, to get some of the important things done that I need to do. So I'm not cured, but I have come to a place of great acceptance also through the support of a PMDD specialist who I've seen and through the support of ongoing mental health treatment that the PMDD is just, it's a part of me. What's going to happen with my condition in the future or with better research into the condition, that, that all remains to be seen. But right now, my best strategies involve keeping a close eye on my cycle. I use the Clue app on my phone, and tracking my moods and planning for input days and output days. That's what I call them especially where it applies to my, my business. Input days, that's, that's when I'm in the depths of my PMDD. That's when I schedule my research and developments, particularly reading books, reading articles, reading, 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 taking things in. If I want to produce content, if I want to produce a talk, or if I want to, to write something or, or schedule a bunch of new clients for consultations, I schedule those for my output days, which is the other two weeks of my cycle, because that's when I know that I'm at the top of my game and that, and that being in that, like, in that output state will be a lot less challenging than if I were to do those things in the input days. Even recording YouTube videos. It's a much more flowy experience when I am having my output days. That's a very general overview of my experiences with PMDD. I'm gonna call this part one. I will eventually, hopefully soon, put together a part two where I go more in depth into tips and tricks for how I have managed and balanced all of my responsibilities while dealing with PMDD and also how someone without PMDD might be able to apply those things to periods of time where you are experiencing a chronic physical ailment or a time of great stress in your life. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that video when I do manage to squeeze it out of my body. I'll see you in part two. 
Thank you for watching, and if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and share it with someone else who can benefit from it. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell so you know exactly when I've uploaded a new video. You can also book a free life coaching session with me through my website, lesliebcoaching.com, and we can work together online or right here in my studio. Follow me on my socials to keep up with what I'm doing, and please get in touch with any questions, comments, or video ideas you may have. I'm Leslie V, and I'll see you in the next video.